Hello and welcome to Strip Panel Making. I'm Hass and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. We've talked a lot about various ways of portraying your stories through art and what you can get across in a single panel, how pages build for pace or effect. But in this episode, I wanted to show you with the same set of characters, you can do various changes across issues to show their developing and evolving relationship with adapting mental states. I've talked before about this writer on Strip Panel Naked, but Tom King has done some phenomenal work in his short career. And it's interesting that through a lot of his very formal approach to structuring his books, some of the most human characters he's written, in my opinion, are the machine people in the vision. And a big part of that reason is actually through the art of Gabriel Hernandez Walter and the colorist of Jordi Belair. So rather than looking at one issue in this episode, I want to take a selection of pages from the the first two issues and focus on how King, Walter and Belair structure and render pages to show the evolving relationship between the various members of the Vision family. From the very first issue we're presented with the distance between Vision and his wife Virginia. King opens up this issue with an introduction to their neighbours, another couple. It's clear he's using this couple as a way to examine the relationship between Vision and Virginia. So we're showing George and Nora together in the frame at the top of the page and Nora overlaps George and Walter has them both looking inwards to each other. It creates a sense of togetherness and unity. This is reinforced by the middle panel where, again, they're placed together and framed within the frame of the porch. It encloses them and actually creates this kind of visual of them being trapped, but they're trapped together. And this repeats throughout the rest of the page as George and Nora are always placed together and in these last two panels, again, the focus is placed inwards to each other. You get the feeling from this body language that these are two people who are used to each other, they rely on each other, and they tend to do a lot of things together, probably because it feels safer. And if we skip ahead a little bit into the first issue, we'll see how the Vision's family is rendered in contrast. George and Nora have been invited in, and Vision is giving them a tour. You can see Vision is framed out of the panel, his family separate, and that immediately creates a distance, and it's continued through the other panels too. And right off that, you've got Vision with George and Nora, while Virginia is in the shadow in the background, walking in a different direction. A panel right, and Virginia isn't even included, and if we drop down to the final panel, you can see Virginia, arms crossed, half in darkness, which is actually a nice clever foreshadowing of the situation she'll find herself in later in the story. And on the first panel of the next page, you can see that an extra effect, as King and Walter punch in on that visual. You see Vision front and centre, George and Norman together, overlapping again, and Virginia in the background, head down, closed off body language and rendered in shadow. The light is coming from behind here, from outside the window, and the windows will play a huge part in the relationship explanation between Vision and Virginia. So what are we learning? Vision is unaware of the darkness that seems to permeate his wife. To him, it all seems like regular family life. Later still in the first issue, there's another great example of this distance in between them too, because they're tidying up in the kitchen after George and Norma have left, and if we look at their placement, Virginia is placed behind Vision. It makes a distance, further away from us as the audience, and the final two panels present us with Virginia in this very, very black panel, and this grid behind her closing the space in. It feels very, very closed off and very, very tight, whereas Vision has a beige, brighter panel that's just a single colour and it feels very open in contrast. And if we turn the page, the dynamic continues to evolve. Vision has to try a little harder here. He's questioned by Virginia. Virginia on the previous page and he ends up reaching out an arm and bringing Virginia's hand into the light space with him in the middle right panel. And then we leave with this big wide open space behind them in the window. The freedom available outside is right there for them both to grasp but they're still contained within this unit of the house. And if we skip ahead to issue 2, let's look immediately at how you can see that dynamic crashing to a halt. For a bit of context, Something quite big happens at the end of the first issue and it causes Virginia to do something quite drastic and the house gets trashed as a result, along with her having to lie to her husband Vision about what really went down. And so we're given this page, three horizontal panels which showcase the emptiness left and right and Virginia in a single shot and the Vision in a single shot and you can feel the emptiness beside her. I think there's a reason she's framed to the left side of the page and the family to the right in those photos. You know, on her left is the vase that Norma back in issue one will remark on the oddness of the emptiness of the vase and that's heavy symbolism being built into the mise-en-scene by Walter and King. Again, Virginia has this window behind her with these warm autumnal colours by Belair. It creates this sense that life is so much better outside the house. It's so much warmer, it's less cold, it's less dark. The house is constraining them and their happiness, which is a comment by King on the status of Vision and his marital life and plan, you know, it's not working, clearly. And then we move over to the panel of Vision. Again, his left side is empty and he's framed by the doorway and all this destruction behind him. It's particularly interesting because if you think about the blocking, that is where the characters are placed in the scene, Vision is looking at his wife, the vase, the family and the world outside. He is the viewpoint that everything could be okay. The sun's shining on him, he can see his family, he can see these beautiful items. Virginia has to look at the mess, the smashed house, 
she's shrouded in darkness. It says so much about the characters and you understand a lot about their emotional state and the way that they can see the world because of this blocking and because of this framing and just from two panels. Then Walter and King highlight the distance we've already seen in issue one again with this side shot. The empty fireplace sits between them, this void of nothingness and just that ever bloom plant, which the myth says in the first issue unlocks the doors of time and it creeps into the edge of the panel. A page later, Vision's on his feet. The lighting keeps him in the sunshine, Virginia's still in the shadow. She stays to the left side of the page, which tends to be the weaker side because your eye travels from left to right and the blocking puts Vision stood up. Again, a more powerful position, his arms crossed. This doesn't feel like a loving moment between the couple, it feels defensive and aggressive in equal measure. And the next panel keeps that dominance from Vision, him being bigger, higher, looking down. But King and Walter add something interesting, that almost firework-like visual of the Everbloom in the background, completely filling the rest of the dead space in the panel. And it's almost as if that visual is what turns the corner for Vision, because he sits next to his wife and stretches out an arm around her. Walter draws it with a divide, though, in this panel, as a window frame splitting the two of them, and the scene really becomes quite dark. Virginia's body language doesn't change, and we don't get the sense that this small gesture is doing much to comfort her. Similarly, with this final panel, the body language seems right right, the head on the shoulder, but she's still locked in on herself with the folded arms, and they don't look at each other. If we reference it back to George and Norma, this feels like two people playing at a relationship. And that's the first two issues, and it develops in numerous ways over the rest of the run published to date. But what it reminds us is that characters aren't just drawn in a panel, they have to be alive, they have to feel alive. In cinema and theatre, blocking is really, really important. Placing your characters in positions to create emotive responses, and playing around with lighting in the scene, it's all just part of what goes into making a great shot in cinema, or a great bit of staging in theatre. And in comics, because it's just a 2D flat page, that idea can sometimes get a bit lost, but picking up any issue of Walter Belair and King's Division is an easy way to remind yourself of the power of those tools. And they allow you to build a character as a real person, one that feels like it exists beyond the boundaries of the page. And while some of that is Tom King's writing, so much of it comes down to the beautiful, beautiful nuance of work by Walter and the extra levels of story added by Belair. So much of this story is told in those quiet moments in the way the body language changes from panel to panel. And that's so interesting and so important to be able to utilize that as a method of storytelling in comic books. And this will be a book we come back to more on Strip Panel Naked. But for now, I hope you've seen a little about what makes this book such an interesting and unique character study. And why a book about a family of androids is actually really about the way we interact with each other and our own family units. Thanks for watching. If you love Strip Panel Naked and want to support us more, check out our Patreon where you can find more page annotations, reading lists and extra articles and analysis every single week. At the moment, there's over 100 pages of annotated comics if you want to check those out. And if you want to see a little bit more analysis during the week, check out my Twitter at HasanaWee where I routinely break down and annotate pages of comics I'm currently reading. And this episode was edited by UC Keish. Check him out on Twitter and tell him what a great job he's doing. And of course, if you're loving the content, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week.